Hey guys, how's it going? I know it's been a while since I posted a video, but I really wanted to spend a lot of time with this particular laptop. This is the Alienware X17 2022 edition. This one has a 3070 Ti and an Intel Core i7 12th generation CPU. And I'm really trying to get to a thousand subscribers as fast as possible. So if you've seen my videos and you're getting any kind of value out of it, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that if you hit that subscribe button. I don't even care about the bell icon. Just hit that subscribe button and, I'm, and I'll be happy. With that being said, let's just start talking about the build and the design. Subjectively, this is one of my favorites. I love the outside color. It might be an eggshell white, and I'm not saying that as a joke or to insult this product, but it's like a really nice color. It's like an off-white. It definitely makes it unique and a blast to look at and take pictures of. The lid definitely doesn't feel like aluminum. I can immediately tell that it's a magnesium alloy. And whatever type of paint or coating that they're using on the white exterior portion feels smooth and stiff. I'm not sure how this will hold up long term, but as of today, I can tell you that this it's a really nice feeling laptop. Then we have the Alienware logo, which is white, and that blends in with the outside lids off-white color so if you wanted the rgb off it's a really nice understated look compared to something like the razor where it's always that uh, kind of obnoxious looking green color and then as you make your way down you're greeted by the 17 which signifies that it's an x17 and this whole outside lid like it just kind of screams Mass Effect vibes to me, and I mean that in a really good way. And then making our way down to the bottom, and I think I might be wrong, but I think Alienware might be the first laptop manufacturer to have that protruding rear exhaust with the Area 51M back in the day. And they did it so tastefully back then, it's even nicer now. Probably it's probably because it's much thinner and it protrudes less. But anyway, I think the competition started copying having this particular design type. And it's necessary because it allows for better ventilation and better exhaust and AKA better temps. But I don't think none of them really try to incorporate into their design the way Alienware does. It's just something that sticks out of the back when the screen is open. Alienware from the get-go made it a statement and a part of their design with the Tron lighting and I can't have that go unnoticed. One thing I do want to say about the ports though is I don't like not having any pores on the side. I understand it looks cleaner. I like the option of having at least some USB pores on the side um, instead of having to reach to the back. And they're not lit up like the Legion is, or they're not even labeled like the Legion 5 is. So you literally have to like kind of get up and then maneuver your way to the back to kind of find where the ports are. It's a minor inconvenience, but I'm lazy and that's something I wish I didn't have to do. It is a bit unusual though that the headphone jack is on the side and so is the power adapter, but that's it. Everything else is on the back. And you know, I, I, I'm not, that's not a ding. That's definitely personal preference. That's a design choice. And I know a lot of people will prefer them all to be at the back. I'm just not one of them. And around the size is just exhaust ports and it doesn't seem to blow as hard as something like the GE76 or the SCAR to where my mouse hand gets warm and I hate that because it's become, it becomes distracting. But what's not distracting though is when you open up the laptop and you're greeted to an all matte black keyboard deck and bezels which is the right choice because it's not distracting. Your eyes can immediately focus on the content instead of just say if the keyboard deck was also white. Um, black bezels are important because they are less distracting, so that's good. And speaking of the keyboard, I'm really, really happy I got the Cherry MX switches, and these are fantastic. There's nothing else like this in the market. It's so amazing to use. It's almost addicting. There's sometimes I just feel like randomly picking up this laptop just to start typing, even though I don't need to. I've never experienced anything else like this before. Using the WASD keys um, to play games, typing up some notes for this particular review, and just using the web and just responding to YouTube comments or just surfing on Reddit, this keyboard has been fantastic to use. Okay, yeah, but obviously the keyboard is not perfect. Not all of the keys use the switches, the escape and the function buttons don't. I, I don't know, it, it, to me that just seems a little bit off. And, ob and obviously because these are Cherry MX switches, they are loud. 
if you're studying in a library or if you have someone next to you or if you're just watching TV with, with a group of friends or whatever, it's loud enough to where they're going to give you looks and they're going to ask you to close the laptop and stop typing. If you share a space with someone, maybe consider that. And I'll just quickly touch on the trackpad. It works really well. It's definitely glass, but it's a bit small. And it's kind of unfortunate because there's a lot of real estate here. They could have put a larger trackpad in, in there. And Dell knows how to make really good and large trackpads. I'm really disappointed that they didn't do that. And just really quickly on the charger, they're using a Gallium Nitride 240 watt charger and it's small and it's very compact and it's easy to transport around, which is fantastic. The cable length is a decent amount, not as much as I would like, but at least it's sufficient. Let's start talking about the display, which is my favorite section. We're getting 100% of sRGB, 90% of Adobe RGB, and 99% of DCI-P3, and 88% of NTSC, which I think is the highest score I've gotten for NTSC, except for maybe the Gigabyte Aero 16, which had that wonderful Samsung OLED panel. Subjectively, this is a great panel to look at. The contrast I measured a few times, and I was getting anywhere between 900 to one and 1000 to one, which is to be expected. But there's something about the blacks that just look a little bit better than they did on the on the razor blade or even the GE76 2022 model. And just overall, um, there's just something about this particular display that just looks better. Even though it's only hitting 400 nits, it just looks punchier for some reason. I, I don't know if it's the um, additional color gamut, but it's not by that much. But I think the type of matte coating that they use does allow the picture to be a bit sharper and the colors to probably show up a little bit more saturated than, than the other laptops. I'm not sure. But there's just something about this particular display that looks fantastic. And what else I do really want to talk about that I'm so excited about is this 4K panel has advanced Optimus and G-Sync. And at 120 hertz, that is absolutely necessary for gaming. With every other 120 hertz 4K panel that I've used this year and even last year, you do see a lot of screen tearing when you're playing games. This, because it has G-Sync, it smooths everything out. So you're getting the probably the best 4K gaming experience out of every other laptop. The Razer is awesome because it's 4K 144 hertz. So if you're playing Call of Duty or if you're playing um, Apex or any fast paced shooter, even something like Rocket League, um, having the 144 hertz will be amazing for that particular laptop. But if you're playing single player games, I would say that this is still the best laptop on the Razer, even though at 144 hertz, I did see some screen tearing. At 120 hertz on the GE76, I'm seeing a lot of screen tearing. This, there's none. Everything looks crystal clear and smooth. So even if you're gaming anywhere between 40 hertz, all the way up to 120 hertz, you'll you'll be covered with G-Sync. And it and the response time seems fast enough too. I don't measure that. I don't have a good way of measuring it, but just. Subjectively, it looks just as good as any of the other 4K panels I've used this year. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention with the display is it's HDR, actual HDR, where you could go into the window settings and turn it on. And HDR looks fantastic on this particular laptop because the contrast is pretty good. And because the brightness is around 400 nits and because the color output is um, over DCI-P3 and again, 88% of um, NTSC, HDR really pops on this laptop. So another reason to consider this over some of the other um, 4K panels this year. So I get th this is another reason that puts this particular display at the number one spot pretty much. I think the, I think the only thing that the competition is doing better is the Razer has a 144 Hertz and both the Razer and the MSI um, displays are brighter. I still haven't tried out the Aero 17. Maybe someday I will. And I'm just gonna quickly touch on battery. It's It's been kind of all over the place. You know, I, I'm, I'm realizing that I'm saying this about every single laptop. I think it's just this year's Intel chips. The battery life is just kind of all over the place. I can't comfortably give you a number. Just for me using it, it looks like I'm getting the standard two, anywhere between two to four hours. Um, I know that's 
it's like a 50% delta that I'm giving you, but I mean, two hours or double that is four hours. So I'm having a hard time giving you good battery numbers. Right now, I just don't think Intel's 12th gen i7 or i9 processors are going to be giving you the best battery life, if that's something that's important to you. I think the speakers are pretty okay. It looks like there's a lot of potential for them to be good though. It sounds like they have a good amount of dynamic range and the bass sounds like it could be good, but the mids sound kind of muffled and just not clear. And I think what doesn't really help is the speakers are on the front or on the front of the laptop. So when you put your hands over it to type, they block they block into the cover and I think that's a bad design choice. I kind of hope that they could work on the speakers a little bit more. I think they're onto something. Maybe it just needs some software tuning or maybe it just needs to be placed better. But right now I think the speakers are pretty, they're, they're adequate. I'm happy with them, but there's better out there. All right, so on to the performance. I just want to note that I have the 3070 Ti version, not the 3080 Ti version that I had on the Razor Blade 17 or the GE76. So obviously you're not going to expect as good of scores as you did on that. But I still think you'll be happy. And if you went with this particular configuration, you'll be able to play just about every game out there. At 4K, you're going to have to drop some of the settings. So maybe for 4K, I would see if you can spring for the 3080 Ti. It's just the price delta between the 3070 Ti and 3080 Ti is so high that it, I'm kind of hesitant to recommend the upgrade. But if you can, I would say go for it. And in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it's a good example because the X17 at 4K is getting 53 FPS. But if you were to step up to the GE76, you'll be able to play it over 60 FPS. And then the Razer and the Razer Blade was able to get 60. So that could be enough of a swing. And yes, the difference between 53 frames and 60, especially 64, is noticeable. And one example I like to use is if, if anybody has a PlayStation 5 and they played Ratchet, there was a 30 FPS mode that shipped with the game, and then they introduced a 45 FPS mode if your TV supported 120 hertz. And honestly, it was very noticeable, the difference between 30 FPS and, and 45 FP FPS. I know it doesn't seem like much frames, but when you're, when you're that low, then it, it, it does make a difference. But like if, if you're at 144 hertz, going up to 155 hertz probably won't make as much of a difference. And one thing I do want to point out about Shadow of the Tomb Raider is the Legion 5i Pro is actually doing a good amount better. And I think the reason is um, the X17 is just isn't getting as much power, even though they're both rated for 150 watts on the GPU. The Legion 5i has that 300 watt adapter, while the while the X17 has a 240 watt po um, power adapter. It's, even though it says that it could go up to 150 watts, it's just not hitting it. It's not hitting that because it doesn't have the the power. But if you do step up to the 3080 Ti model, you are getting a 330 watt break with this laptop, and you're getting a beefier cooling system. So the weight would also go up to almost eight pounds versus six pounds is what I'm seeing on this particular laptop. All right, so now let's look at Time Spy. The X17 is getting 11,431, 10,000 on the CPU. The, the, these numbers do seem a bit low. All right, so let's look at Guardians of the Galaxy. I do like testing this game because I can crank up the RTX settings and I'm able to use DLSS quality and DLSS does look really good in this game, especially at 4K. At 1080p, you're getting 99 FPS. It's, if you're looking for the best 3070 Ti laptop, this doesn't seem to be it. But I believe that this is one of the few laptops, gaming laptops I should say, where you could get a 3070 Ti and a 4K display. And at 4K, you're getting 46 FPS versus something like the GE76 where you could be getting 57 FPS. And yes, again, that's going to make a difference visually. Okay, so next up is Red Dead Redemption 2. At 1080p, you're getting 80 FPS. 80 point, let's just say 81 FPS. At 1440p, you're getting 64, which does scale well if you wanted to bring this from 4K down to 1440p. Um, 
it still looks fine. You're not ex- you're not seeing as bad of dithering as you would on some other laptops. It just seems to look okay at 1440p. But I'd rather just play at 4K um, and I'm able to get 42 FPS. But if I was to turn on DLSS quality, I'm able to get 55 FPS. And DLSS looks really good on Red Dead Redemption 2 to where I can even play this game on performance DLSS settings or even the ultra performance DLSS settings. The only time I really notice um, how bad it looks is when I'm looking at character's hair or the horse's, or, or the horse's tail or blades of grass. So it seems like fine details. Um, the LSS just can't really display very well yet. Oh, there's still some room, more room for improvement. But the additional frames that you're getting does kind of make it, in my opinion, worth it. Okay, so next we have Metro Exodus, which is still a very, very heavy game. It still makes some of the best systems chug. Um, so at 1080p, and by the way, I'm running max settings with um, RTX and DLSS Ultra. I'm 1080p, I'm getting 61 FPS. At 1440p, I'm getting 49 FPS. And at 4K, I'm getting 27 FPS. And versus the GE76, that's 36.71. So a game like Metro Exodus, with the 3070Ti X17, and you're not really able to play it in ultra settings with DLSS Ultra at 27 FPS. To me, that's unplayable. But at 36 FPS on the GE76, it's definitely playable. And I'm... I'm really anticipating that the X17 3080Ti model will perform pretty much identical to the GE76. So far, all of the 165 or 175 watt TGP laptops have performed just about the same. I mean, maybe a few frames here or there, not enough to make a difference. All right, that's going to cover it for the benchmarks. This time I did it a little bit different because I'm looking at a 4K display and I think a lot of people buying this particular laptop are interested in the 4K display. But I think this laptop is underperforming not because of thermal limitations. I think it's more than likely because of power limitations. This laptop should have shipped with a larger power brick. Let me give you some closing thoughts. I think this is a great laptop and I think what really sets it apart is the, is the design. The keyboard, oh my god, the keyboard is so good. And I know I already gushed over it and I, I'm going to continue to gush over it. I just love using this thing. Only issue is it's, it's distracting and it's noisy and it'll bother people next to you. The design is fantastic. I think they made the right choices. The speakers need to be a little bit better. But I think a lot of that can be done in software. Um, obviously, you can't fix the poor speaker placement in software. I'm, I'm curious to see what the 3080 Ti model will be like. I know that mo- I know that one's like significantly heavier. Almost, it's over seven pounds, which would bring it to be the heaviest laptop I've ever used. This one, like I said, was about six pounds. I mean, and th- this laptop for such a high performing laptop is thin. I will say though, and I know I've mentioned this a few times already. If you're tr- if you're if you're concerned this laptop for the 4k display if you can spring for the 3080 ti especially in some of the games i've tested it takes it from being unplayable at ultra settings to playable yeah with that all being said guys um if if you if you were considering this laptop if you were considering ordering this i can't think of a reason not to there's no there's no deal breakers yeah i think i'm gonna leave it at that all right guys thanks have a good one bye